Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and I have with me today Mike Fenton, who is the author of a book called The Savior's Guardian. And I'll just let Mike tell us more about his book. Okay. Well, thank you, Julia. This is my book. It's called The Savior's Guardian. And um, I'm really, uh, this is a culmination of six years of effort. I started my book, um, oh, uh, actually when we lived in Washington State, and I went to a writer's conference, uh, Christian Writers Guild, uh, run by um, uh, Jerry, oh, I forgot his name. Anyway, he wrote the um, uh, Left Behind series. And um, he wanted to give back to writers, and so he started the Christian Writers Guild. And I went there thinking I was going to get a publisher and, uh, and an agent, and um, I learned very quickly that uh, I didn't know very much. And I had been writing all of my uh, technical career, and so I thought, and then I, I'm an avid reader, and uh, thought that, I just knew everything about writing, and um, I learned very quickly that um, I didn't know what I was doing, and that there is so much competition for writing books. And yes, uh, mm -hmm. um, so I, I was actually there by myself. My wife was at home, and I called her and I said, "Hey, I need to learn more about writing, especially about writing novels." And so I signed up for the Christian Writers Guild. Um, apprenticeship class, oh. and I just I put writing all together for a while and took the apprenticeship class. It took me two and a half years, and mm -hmm. I learned so much about writing. And um, the book is better for it. Uh, actually, at the end of near the end of the study, which is fifty uh, classes. And uh, near the end of that, uh, it actually takes you right back into looking at your own stuff, what you've written, and making it better. And so it took me right back into writing again. And um, I essentially started over, uh, and everything, uh, I couldn't believe, I actually, I, when I started reading what I'd written, I, I just couldn't believe what I'd written. And so... The book became better for it, but the whole process is amazing, Julia, the whole writing process, and I've really enjoyed it, uh, and I, everybody who's read my book has enjoyed it, so uh, it's, it's really uh, a, a work of love. Uh, God has inspired me, uh, I know that, and uh, uh, maybe I could tell you a little bit about it. Yeah, tell us uh, about the story, a little bit about the story. I will. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, imagine uh, it takes place at the time of, of the birth of Christ, mm -hmm. and um, there's you know, this takes place during the Magi are going to worship Jesus, and um, the prince... Uh, Persia sends his captain of the guard, his name is Ashra, to watch over the Magi as they travel from Persia to Judea. And, and his, the, Ashra is essentially torn from his uh, perfect life. Uh, you know, here he is 25 years old and he has the world, uh, you know, his, his oyster and, mm -hmm. and he, ends up having to go with the Magi. They face great dangers crossing the desert, and uh, he, he ends up being asked by the Magi, who have spilled the beans to King Herod, that Jesus has been, been, been born. If, mm. if uh, the Magi never uh, went to Herod, Herod would never have known that Jesus had been born. And so... Um, they feel bad about that, and so they ask Ashra to, to stay behind and secretly watch over Jesus and the family. And so oh. it becomes Ashra's commitment to spend the, his 
life then, his, the next 30 years of his life, secretly watching over Jesus. And that's the story. And what oh. happens to Asher. And uh, so it, it ends up being a, a very interesting story. Uh, you get to see what happens with Jesus uh, through the years that we don't know much about. I, I I didn't take too much license about trying to explain that, but I, I learned a lot. I did a lot of history. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I did a lot of research. Uh, of course, I didn't deviate from what it says in the Bible, but I, I, I learned a lot, and I put a lot of history and a lot of, uh, what I learned from even our travels, my wife and I went on uh, trips to uh, the Holy Land. We also went to Ephesus in Turkey. And I, mm-hmm. I took all of that information and I put it into the book. So it really wow. makes it interesting. That, so. so you got to tax deduct those? <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't actually do that, but... Um, it, just to, to get to take those travels, and, and it was really amazing. Uh, in Ephesus, for example, we got to go to what are called the terrace houses in Ephesus. And, Julia, if you ever get the chance, I strongly recommend to go to Ephesus because it's an amazing city. What were um, they like? Well, uh, this is where the aristocrats lived. And oh. so these are Roman houses that were built on the hillside, as thus the terrace houses. And um, we saw veneer walls of marble uh, oh. cut no more than a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, we saw mosaics on the floors, columns, and... Uh, just amazing uh, artwork that have been reconstructed since the 1960s, and they're still excavating. and And they, we got to, uh, we got a special uh, guide to take us through the terrace houses. Not everybody gets to go through uh, this special area, so we got to see all that. They even had had running water inside they these did? houses. Wow! Yes, with uh, bathrooms, and we got to see the clay pipes, and uh, th- they even use some of those uh, clay pipes still, right to this day, to run water in in certain parts of that uh, excavation. Did they, they made, make you run through, walk through, in little slippers to protect the floors? <laughs> no, but it, we did get to actually see the workers while we were there. And they're in, in not special clothing, but, you know, they, they are very careful in what they do. Everything is done with gloves, and, and uh, it was interesting. We got to see people washing down walls. We get to see them. Uh, put, it was, they had these tables with all these marble pieces. It looked like jigsaw puzzles where they're trying to put pieces back together. It was very, oh very interesting. How amazing. So, um, yeah, it was. And uh, so there's a, a city that I talk about in my book called Sepphoris. And I'm convinced that uh, Jesus and Joseph, uh, you know, we, we know that Jesus was a carpenter and Joseph, um, he, Jesus worked under Joseph as an apprentice. And we, we think of, you know, maybe a lowly carpenter with his little shop in, behind the house or something like that. Mm-hmm. But we, well, I actually believe that Joseph was a craftsman and that he worked in this uh, city of Sepphoris, was, which was no more than an hour's walk from uh, Nazareth, which is where Jesus grew up with the family. And that uh, Joseph was actually a, uh, a, a builder, and that he built much of Sepphoris, which was being built at the time when Joseph and Jesus were would have been, uh, you know, building uh, things. And I, I believe that they were uh, probably building things uh, even at uh, all through Jesus' life. Uh, up to the time when he actually started his ministry. 
So you may have been looking at things built by Jesus. Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm not an ethicist, but like what we saw in Ephesus, and so I was able to write that into the book. It, it was amazing. So I got to talk about fountains, you know, in, in villas and in mosaics and, uh, you know, the, the marble and, and that kind of thing. And to imagine, uh, in, in my research, I was actually able to, to see, uh, you know, what they're doing in Sepphoris, like what they're doing in, in Ephesus, and equate that and, and put that in the book. So it was, it was very, very interesting. What an That's adventure. And oh, are yeah. you... Very much so. Are you writing a new book now? Actually, I'm writing a sequel. And I still have more things for Ashra to do. Um, and it, it's, uh, it's called uh, the Imperial... Uh, the Imperial... Uh, it's... Imperial, oh, I forget my word. But anyway, it's, a, it's about uh, an APB from the uh, Roman emperor looking for Ashra to, be, to come to Rome. And Ashra's not sure he wants to go. <laughs> because we might. But anyway, uh, yeah, what, what, uh, it, a lot of what I've learned is that uh, Jesus was very influential on the... Roman military, and so uh, the book focuses on what that influence is all about. And so, I, again, a lot of research, and I don't know if, if you remember from uh, when the centurion in uh, Capernaum uh, came to Jesus and asked for Jesus to heal his servant. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, well, I'll come right now. And um, the centurion said, all you need to do is say the word, and I know it will be done. And Jesus was so amazed of, of that centurion's faith. And there are many other places in the Bible where Romans, uh, Roman soldiers in particular were influenced by Jesus and, and what he accomplished and what he but did. But they're the ones that killed uh, him, aren't they? Well, yes, even at the cross, there were Romans who were carrying out the, the uh, you know, what was being done to kill Jesus on the cross. And there's a Roman who, re even right before Jesus' death, says, surely this was the Son of God. And so even at the cross, there's a Roman who realizes that he was uh, witnessing the death of a of, uh, of, of, uh, son of God. And so uh, very much a, an influence even there. And so that Roman very likely became a follower of Jesus. So wow. there, there are many other places throughout the Bible where Roman soldiers in particular were influenced by Jesus. And I think it actually leads on to uh, Romans, uh, Roman military becoming followers of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> wow. That is, sounds like a fascinating book. It really yeah, does. It, I think it even leads to, uh, to Rome in particular. And so that's... You know, in the next book, it, you know, the, uh, the call from Rome leads Asherah to Rome. And, you know, I'm not going to give away the story, but, you know, I, my publisher says that uh, she thinks I have a good book, too. Uh, a good second book. And who is your publisher? I use uh, Brass Frog Bookworks. Her name's oh. Patty Hoff. She's right here in Grand Junction. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, what are you going to have it out in audio? I don't know about audio. I haven't gotten that far yet, but <laughs> it is available in bookstores here in Grand Junction and also at the Tattered Cover at the three stores in Denver. Uh, okay. It's available electronically on Amazon, Kindle, and Barnes & Noble Nook. 
and uh, I'm looking to expand my uh, horizons and try to make it more available. I also have a website, www.saviorsguardian.com, uh, where people can go and actually see pictures of Ephesus, for example. I've, I've oh. put up pictures about, about our uh, travels uh, in Ephesus. And um, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get out there more and, and uh, give people an opportunity to share what we've uh, experienced as well as uh, find places, you know, to get my book more readily. Great. And did you um, write a guest blog for TVBackstory.com? Uh, I have one ready. So Great. I'll, uh, I'll get that up there. Okay, so be sure and put your link to your website on there because that I uh, promote that. And I highly encourage anybody who's watching this to go to TVBackstory.com and read Mike's guest blog and see um, his links and his pictures and stuff. Great. Thank you. I'll do yeah. that. All right. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to tell the viewers before we sign off? No. I just uh, very much appreciate what you're doing, Julia. It's a great opportunity to uh, get the word out and uh, for, for us authors. And uh, just thank you so much for this uh, chance to talk about my book. Well, thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you.